Okay. Okay. I'm back to talk about more astoundingly good music that you can have on LPs for generally less than 10 bucks. Cheap Heat, it's called. And I uh, did a previous video talking about music of Canada. Jazz rock, prog rock, weird rock, weird jazz, weird jazz rock. And couldn't get through it all, so there's more. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap it up in this video. What we're listening to now, definitely more of a jazz sound, is a band from Quebec called uh, L'Orchestre Sympathique, the Friendly Orchestra. And it's an uh, uh, interesting group. They did three records and a cassette. I've never seen the cassette. I've got all three records. They're really good. They all kind of sound like this, with vibes, keyboards, uh, flute. The keyboardist doubles on flute, drums and bass. Um, not super heavy, kind of breezy sounding, kind of pleasant. Um, not super challenging, but then not by no stretch of the imagination are, is this a boring band either. They, they do some really cool stuff. So this is the Live in Detroit record, and it's on uh, Canadian Broadcasting, RCI 521. It's, again, one of the few RCI records that's still cheap. Um, their other two records are also very inexpensive. Another live one live at the Montreal Jazz Fest. And another one, this is also live, in concert at the Grand Passé. Anyway, all of them are quite good. All of them can be found readily. And um, I think the only personnel change was the bassist. Um, There's a different bassist on a couple of the records, but really good stuff. If you like vibes and flute, you're gonna dig this band. Um, this is the only record they did with Fender Rhodes. There, there is a picture of them playing a concert with a Fender Rhodes there on stage, but there's no Fender Rhodes on that record. I was a little disappointed because I'm a Fender Rhodes freak. Anyway, Orchestra Sympathique. It'll be in the, in the list below. So a classic band from Canada, from Quebec, um, is Minage, and they're, uh, they started out as a really interesting, very unusual uh, progressive rock band that sort of blended uh, contemporary classical music and percussion music with, with progressive rock. And they sort of evolved their own sound. I'm gonna talk about four of their records, try to keep it brief. They did a bunch, they did a bunch. So this is their first record, simply called Menage. And um, it's, I wouldn't say this qualifies as cheap heat. I'm just sort of doing this out of com completion sake. It's a pretty cool record. It's kind of interesting. But um, I think the classical influences are, are pretty strong on this. Um, it kind of sounds like a music uh, graduate student music, uh, their university project. It's an interesting record though, lots of interesting instrumentation, two reed players, vibes, drums, and bass, and keyboards. Uh, I think it's all acoustic piano, but um, some some very interesting sound textures, a lot of, uh, there's a side long suite on side two that opens up with a solid couple of minutes of bowed percussion. It's really cool. And then, uh, then it goes into the sort of composed stuff. But um, really cool band and some personnel shifts occurred and they got a guitarist and they lost one of the reed players. Um, this is called Le Porsche and it has a trumpet player on it, Raoul Duguay from Linfonie, really fantastic band. Unfortunately, all of their records are pretty expensive. Um, this is sort of the next step in their evolution. A little less of the, of the classical, a little bit more of the progressive rock. Excuse me. A little more of the progressive rock, a little less of the classical instrumental stuff. Um, I was reading their Wikipedia entry and they opened for Soft Machine, they opened for uh, Exception, that Dutch band, um, a few other bands too. They, they really achieved quite a bit of notoriety in, in Canada. I visited there when I was in uh, college and a friend up there and uh, 
she had heard of them and she wasn't super into music so they're really popular this is a really cool record i like this um not their best though their best is this one and on this one uh denis lapierre the guitar player um is a full-time member of the band finally and uh, instead of just a guest and uh he really adds a lot to the band's sound. And this is just an incredible uh, near masterpiece of progressive rock, Inst all instrumental progressive rock. Um, really, really uh, unusual and unique sound. You could compare them to maybe Gentle Giant or Griffin, but I was listening to it. it it's kind of like if Ian Anderson had written a bunch of Jethro Tull tunes and had Pierre Morlens Gong do them. That's kind of what they sound like to me. Um, there's sort of a jazzy sort of lightness to their music, but um, but it's definitely progressive rock still. And uh, some really interesting moments on this, just and beautiful uh, arrangements and uh, very intricate without being fussy. And I think that's really what what um, how they evolved and how they improved. The first two records are a little on the fussy side. This they're just letting it fly, and it's great. And um, this is the last album I have by them. They did several more after this, but uh, this is Libre Service, Free Service. And uh, this is actually a reissue, a 70s reissue. The, the original issue had a different cover. Um, but this is what was on sale. I got this in, in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, when I was visiting in uh, 78. And um, they continue sort of evolving towards a more jazzy sound on this, although, um, this is almost as good as Ni Vent Ni Nouvelle. Almost as good as this one, but not quite there. Um, they're definitely heading towards jazz rock fusion, although I would say this album is still sort of in the instrumental prog mode. I really like this. Now, as they got more jazzy, they got less interesting. And, and after Free Service, I kind of lost interest in them. I had those records, but I wound up selling them. They're good, they're just not great. They're all cheap though, you can get those for less than 10 bucks. And if you're a fan at all of progressive rock or fusion, um, you should really check this out. This is a singular statement, a classic record. So there's a bunch of French Canadian uh, Quebecois musicians that are really doing cool stuff, still are doing cool stuff because they're a little bit younger. Um, uh, and I'm going to go through several of their releases that are still inexpensive. I was actually surprised that uh, these guys, a lot of their records are getting a little pricey. Um, anyway, uh, the genesis of this music, of these musicians, of their careers, uh, was in this band called Conventum. And this is actually a compilation of their uh, first two records. I believe they're only two records. And they repackaged them and uh, made them available to a larger public. Um, I believe the actual uh, OGs of the first two records can be had for not much money at all. Um, this is also really cheap, like $15 for a two record set. It comes, unfortunately, uh, with an insert, but it, no, no gatefold, sadly. But um, Conventum was a really cool group. Uh, it's kind of in the rock and opposition uh, mold, um, a, a chamber rock band. No drums, except for I think they had a guest drummer on a couple of tracks on their second record. Um, but this has all of those records, plus I think an extra track, I'm not sure. It's really hard to tell. <laughs> anyway, two of the people who became, well, three of the people who became very important in the, in the uh, Quebecois progressive rock, rock and opposition scene are, were in this band. Uh, the main one being Rene Lussier, who's an amazing multi-instrumentalist, great guitar player, uh, great composer, excellent drummer. He plays some really great drums on his own records. Um, the other guy is Andre Duchesne, whose uh, solo albums tend to be more in the singer-songwriter kind of mode. Um, so I don't have them. I don't really go for that sound, but they're really cool if you like rock and opposition and uh, art bears and um, that kind of thing. Uh, you'll like those Andre Duchesne records. I don't have them, but he's great. And the other musician that contributed to Conventum uh, was Jean Derome, a really interesting reeds player who's uh, kind of a gets lumped in the jazz crowd, but he's not really purely a jazz musician. He's uh, uh, 
I would, he's more of a avant-garde composer who can improvise. And he did a lot of duo records with René Lussier, one of which I think is outstanding. And I'm going to talk about it in a minute because it's relatively cheap. Anyway, Conventum is where these guys started out, I think. They might have been in other projects before that. But this is where I first heard of them. Through Wayside Records, by the way. Good old Wayside, huh? I, I got a lot of these records through Wayside. So, um, Jean Derome was in a really cool band with some uh, jazz guys. Pierre St. Jacques, a really excellent piano player. And uh, Claude Simard, a really excellent bass player. They had a group called Nebu. And they did two records. And I think this is their first. And it's from 78. 1978 and it's very chamber jazz it's just piano reeds and bass but it's beautiful spooky record really cool record not not the typical cheap heat choice for me because I'm such a jazz rock freak but um Nebu definitely had some sort of ECM spookiness going on some avant-garde uh, craziness going on uh, they weren't just doing jazz and a very creative band and these three musicians are giants in, in the Quebecois scene um, especially Jean Durand they did another record which is very pricey it's got original art on it uh, drawn by Jean Durand I think that's why and every record is different and that record has a drummer on it if you ever see it um, this is what it looks like <laughs> <laughs> but it's not cheap. It's heat, but it's not cheap. That's their second record. Anyway, th both of them are excellent. So, Jean Derome and René Lussier uh, did a bunch of duet records. This is my favorite one of the bunch. Derome Lussier. And uh, it's called Soyez Vigilant, Restez Vivant, Volume 1. There was a Volume 2 that came out several years after this. This is from uh, 80, 1982, and it's on uh, Lucier's own label, Ambiance Magnétiques. Um, he was one of the early people to get the Victoriaville Festival started, and uh, did a lot of organizing around improvised music and jazz in, Qu in Quebec, and uh, just was a central f uh, figure in that scene, and, and still is to this day all kinds of music he's involved in, in multimedia and, and just a giant. This is a great record. If you like Henry Cow, um, you're gonna like this. It's really, I wouldn't say it's a copy of Henry Cow, not by any stretch, but it's really got a lot of the same mojo. Um, you know, just when you think they're gonna do a jazz rock thing, they take a left turn and they do some weird gamelan sounding thing and then they do some weird thing with tapes and then they do something else and then they get back into some different kind of jazz or rock groove it's really cool it's all over the place stylistically and the uh, playing is just magnificent and it's mostly just the two of them there's other musicians helping out on bass and i think another reed player and a guy doing tapes but um another guitarist andre duchene's on this but it's all instrumental and it's all fantastic and again, Henry Cow fans, you're gonna like this. So speaking of Henry Cow, Rene Lucier, of course, fell in with the rock and opposition crowd and formed a band with Chris Cutler on drums and Andre Duchesne called the Four uh, Guitarists of the Apocalypse Bar. And this is their first record. They did two. I don't have the second one I wanted, but I don't have it. And again, this sort of follows along uh, the lines of the more accessible moments of this although it's uh definitely got some thorny thorny sections in it um it's a really cool record and again highly recommend to anybody into rock and opposition um especially henry cow i think that's the the big influence here um but it's four guitar players Rene lucier and andre duchene chris cutler on drums and the other two guitarists are jean-pierre bouchard and Roger Boudreault, and they're all great, and they do some very crazy things on this. Highly recommended. Okay, I'm reaching back just a little bit. There's a really excellent uh, Quebecois uh, progressive rock band called Contraction. I have both of their records. Those are borderline not cheap. Those are like $25, $30 records, typically. Um, I'm sure if you live in Canada, you could probably get them for less. But uh, their bassist...
They're very happy. Right. This is an extraordinarily good record. It's very Canterbury-ish, oddly enough. It reminds me of sort of like a caravan record. Um, it's not as complicated compositionally as Hatfield or National Health or Gilgamesh. It, it's more like, it's more straightforward compositionally, kind of like Caravan, but um, only a couple of the tracks have vocals. The vocals aren't bad. And uh, the, the players on this, it's like all-star cast of uh, Quebecois, progressive rock and jazz musicians. Uh, Pierre St. Jacques is on this, on piano. Um, René Lussier is on guitar. Uh, Matthew Leger is on drums. Um, there's a lot of violin on this. Uh, Bernard Cormier and Josiane Roy, a lot of violin solos, a lot of flute solos, a lot of vibraphone solos. Um, so, yeah, this is a really excellent record. And if you're into the Canterbury sound at all, for whatever reason, I just can't help but think of, of Caravan and maybe the milder moments of Hatfield the North when I play this. It's really excellent and it's not super expensive. I neglected to mention a couple of jazz, rock, fusion, jazz type records from the last video. <laughs> I continue to do research, you know, and I keep listening to these things. It's like, is this good? Is this good? Is this worth talking about? So I found two more records that are worth talking about. that are kind of outside the purview of progressive rock. But this one does happen to be a, a Quebecois band. I just listened to this. This is an amazingly good record. The Jean Baudet Quartet. And Baudet is a uh, Quebecois uh, pianist and composer. And he's got a great band here. Yannick Ryu is on, uh, is on um, uh, soprano sax and tenor sax. Michel Raté on drums. Normand Guilbault on bass. And uh, this is a fine, fine record. Um, it's very hard hitting sort of post bop, free bop type jazz really like it a lot. Um, I was shocked at how good it was. Um, I've had it for a long time and I just hadn't pulled it out and I was looking for other uh, Canadian artists. Of course, now I'm thinking Miriador. I should have pulled that out too, but maybe next time. Finally, I'm not sure if this band's even from, from Canada. This record is from Canada. Um, and it's a record uh, by a group that did two albums. And, and the first album, wasn't that good. It was almost like a smooth jazz kind of record. This record is a, kind of a monster. It's sort of a heavy fusion, progressive rock tour de force. I really like it. There's a couple of kind of cheesy tracks on it, but it still qualifies as cheap heat because it's cheap and it's most, it's 80% of it is great. It's by a band called Orpheus. And the bass player in this band is Randy Coven, who became uh, later on, a big name in the uh, heavy metal, uh, you know, world as a guy who was like, is an amazing bass player. He was like, you know, brought the whole Jocko kind of technique into metal music. And uh, he's just an incredible player. And, and this was one of his first recorded appearances. Um, and you can tell <laughs> that this guy is something. The drumming on this is amazing, too. Um, really, just everybody's got it going on. Um, the other three players, the keyboard player, uh, Soloway, his name is, Michael Soloway, and the drummer, uh, Robert, no, no, that's the, um, that's the guitarist, Robert Lanter. He does a little bit of wordless vocalizing on it. And um, the drummer, his name is, oh, the, 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 the way they did the, uh, thing back here. You can barely see it. It's in yellow. Uh, Marty Zevin. Never heard of any of those other guys uh, since. Fantastic drumming on this, by the way. Really an amazing performance by a group that um, just didn't get its due. And uh, really, check this record out. It's not... It's kind of obscure. It's a little hard to find, but it generally doesn't go for much money. It's really good. Orpheus. It's their second record. And um, I think the title is covered up here. It's called Orpheus 2. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I've got for now. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I didn't talk too long. I'll let the other guy talk. And uh, I'll come back at you with more cheap heat in the near future. Bye.